Cat is a very powerful character animation tool, but its interoperability with Motion Builder requires a bit more work than what you have seen so far. First, the bones in a cat rig are named differently between one skeleton type and another. This is because Cat offers many more rig types than a character studio biped, where all the bones are always named the same way. You could rename your cat bones on a project basis, or you could ultimately edit the rig files to change the bone names globally. These are text files that can be found in the user's app data folder under app data local Autodesk 3ds Max 2011 64 or 32 bit ENU plug CFG cat cat rigs. If you are using the 32 bit version of 3ds Max, substitute 64 for 32 in the path. An example is given here where the Ape 2 rig is named similarly to the base human rig, while the Ape rig is more generic. The problem with some cat rigs like Ape is that some of the bone names are duplicated. The legs and the arms have the same names. This is not a problem for 3ds Max where name duplication is tolerated, but it is a problem for Motion Builder. Motion Builder would have to rename bones with the same names, breaking your workflow in the process. Secondly, the process of bringing back a Motion Builder animation onto a cat rig in 3ds Max is slightly more complex. In this movie, you will concentrate on the export process and how to make a cat skeleton compatible with Motion Builder. The scene you will use shows a superhero character skinned to a cat skeleton. The cat skeleton is based on the base human cat parent rig and was edited to match the topology of the mesh. However, the individual bone names do not follow the naming convention of Motion Builder, nor do they follow the same names as a biped skeleton which would let you use the Motion Builder 3ds Max biped template. It is actually very close to the biped template but not exactly the same. Therefore, you need to create your own template, one that fits the cat skeleton you have created. Select the cat reference and verify its name. It reads base human. This initial name repeats itself as a prefix for every bone in the skeleton. If you were to create a motion builder template based on this skeleton, it would be hard coded for skeleton named base human. This means that if you were to create an additional skeleton for this scene, you would not be able to use the same template again. Make a copy of this skeleton by using Shift Move. Notice that the new skeleton's base name is Base Human 001. A template created for the first skeleton would not work for this new one. This is where the magic of the colon comes into play. The colon is a special character that Motion Builder reads as a separator. Internally, Motion Builder considers only the bone names that come after the colon, while the prefix prevents any name duplication. Select the character reference on the left and rename it Alice colon. Don't forget the colon after the name. Rename the one on the right Bob colon. This is to differentiate characters A and B. Export the FBX file as you have learned before. Open the FBX file in Motion Builder. If you tried characterizing one of the skeletons, say Alice, you would get an error. Motion Builder is looking for a set of required bones and cannot find them since the cat bone names are named differently. In the navigator, expand characters and rename the new entry Cat Base Human. Double click it to view its parameters and then click the Character Definition tab. Expand the Base Required option. This is mostly what needs to be defined. In the viewer, select the pelvis bone. It's a small bone named Alice Pelvis. Press Alt and drag this bone into the hips channel in the navigator. Do the same with the other required bones. Alice left thigh becomes left up leg, Alice left calf becomes left leg, and so on. You may find it easier to use the schematic view, Ctrl W, to do this kind of work. 
remember to always hold ALT when you drag a bone into the channel. For the spine, use Alice Spine 1 as a requirement. You'll fill the other spine bones in a moment. For the arms, do not worry about the collar bones at this time. Again, you will deal with those in a second. The head is already in place as its name matches Motion Builder's naming convention. Once you have the 13 required bones, you can start filling in the rest. Expand the spine list. You need to make some corrections here as spine 1 is duplicated. Remap the spine so that it starts with spine 1 and ends with the ribcage. Expand the auxiliary list and use the color bones in the shoulder channels. Use Alice Neck 1 in the neck channel. At the bottom of the navigator, in the neck list, correct the neck entry so that only the neck and neck 1 channels are populated. You can cancel the channel by double clicking and deleting its contents. Now that you have filled your channels, required and auxiliary alike, you can go ahead with the characterization process. However, this would work only on Alice and you would have to redo all this work on Bob. Instead, you will extract the template from Alice that would also work on Bob. Click the Extract Naming Template button and notice how the bone names get translated into the template. Everything to the left and including the colon gets discarded and the template would work equally well on any cat rig based on the base human cat parent. To save this template to disk so you can reuse it, first click the clear mapping list to get rid of any reference to Alice. Select the cat base human entry in the navigator and then choose File, Save Selection. Give your template a name, for example, cat base human template. You can choose what to store in this file to reduce file size. In this case, you only need the character element. For this example, however, just accept the defaults. You can use this technique to create a template for any two or four legged cat parent. From this point on, the process of rigging any cat character based on the base human skeleton becomes much easier. To prove this point, reopen the Alice Bob file. Adjust your view and place it in X ray mode. To characterize either of your cat skeletons, merge in the template file. Double click its entry in the navigator to see the character definition window. Only this time you won't need any manual labor as the template is already in place. Using Region Select, select all the bones that make up Alice. Alt to drag the bones from the viewer into any of the channels in the navigator. All the Alice bones fall into place. If you wish, you can rename the character entry as Alice to differentiate it from any other. This done, you can enable the Characterize option to get into familiar territory. To rig Bob, merge the template once again into the scene. In the navigator, rename the new entry Bob. Region select an area around Bob. Because you are in X-ray mode, only the skeleton is selected. All drag into the navigator. All of Bob's bones fall into place. It is usually a good idea to add a topmost reference to the character. We didn't do it with Alice, but let's do it properly with Bob. Using the schematic view, I'll drag the Bob colon red node into the reference channel. Characterize the biped. Use it in conjunction with the control rig.
or retarget it to follow an animation, like the punch sequence in the tutorials folder. Plot the animation to the skeleton as you learn to do. Save the animated file to disk for use in 3ds Max. In the next movie, you will import the punch sequence into 3ds Max to use on your existing cat rig.